Hello everyone, my name is Wing Supernova, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. In the last episode, we uh, we went around, uh, met with Professor Mikotoba and the judge, Jigoku, uh, from Japan, and then we came back here, and <laughs> uh, Herlock, with his newest scheme to uh, make rent this month, uh, dyed his hair red and tried to join a club of red-headed gentlemen, uh, but they found out who he was pretty immediately. Um, and then, well, we've got a we've got something ding-a-linging here at Iris's tea room. So let's see what we've got. Aha! Here is my guest now, my latest client with money to spend. Ooh, I do hope it's an exciting case, Hurley. Remember, Iris, we are at present gripped by the greatest problem known to man. I must be willing to accept any case, no matter how unstimulating. Save locating a runaway, of course. Don't spare anyone's feelings, will you? Oh dear, I'm afraid that Hurley can lack a little tact, especially just before the rent is due. Whoa. Oh, it's you from... you were a juror in the last case. Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Herlock Sholmes! Please! Oh, please! Please find my husband! He's run away! Oh, really? To upset me. I beg your pardon? Never mind. A personal matter. My apologies. What exactly are you trying to say, Mr. Naruhodo? I didn't say a word. Come, my dear madam, be seated. Iris, some tea, if you please. Of course! What's the matter, Miss Susato? Oh, it's... it's just that gentlewoman. I feel sure I've seen her somewhere before. Very recently. Yes, now you come to mention it. As I explained earlier, my name my name is Evie or Evie. I'm gonna go Evie. Evie Vigil. I implore you to take the case, sir. Money is no object. Simply name your figure. Money and wealth are of little consequence to me, madam. That's that's the that's the biggest lie you've told so far. Being offered a case to solve is reward enough. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you are the picture of benevolence. I will of course make a mental note of your offer, however, for contingent reasons. I trust you will remember your words also. Um, if I might inquire, sir. This gentleman and lady would be... Oh, um, me? What I am about to tell you, I should like to communicate in the strictest confidence, you understand? Ah, these are my friends. I assure you. You may say before this pair anything which you may say to me. Ah, uh, I see. I can vouch for the gentleman personally, after all. He's hard of hearing. Why did I ever get my hopes up? <laughs> Alright. I guess we'll talk about you first. Forgive me for asking, Mrs. Vigil, but have we met somewhere before? Quite recently, perhaps? Oh my! Pshaw! My dear fellow, what is your intention? Clearly, how you, clearly you have no ability to differentiate the facial features of the English. If you wish to invite the lady to tea, you must do so in a more gentlemanly fashion. Is it possible that you're the nice young lawyer from the trial I attended last week? Ah, I knew I recognized her. To have a man's fate in the palm of one's hand... Oh gosh, oh golly, it shins, it sends shivers down my- I, I literally messed that up when I was doing it the first time. I didn't quite recognize her because she's acting so differently now. It must be very difficult for you as a lawyer, being hard of hearing, I mean. Pardon? <laughs> oh dear, I'm so sorry. Don't worry if you can't hear. It was frippery, really. Nothing more. I've not heard that term. 
Now look what you've started, Mr. Sholmes. Thank you very much. I believe it would be prudent for you to sit quietly in the corner. Yes. And by sitting quietly in the corner, we're going to ask more questions. Tell us about your husband, madam. Mr. Vigil, my daily, is 40 years of age. I have a photograph here. I don't recognize him, so he's new. Hmm, an entirely unremarkable gentleman, by appearance at least. How long have you been married? It will be 15 years this year. We have a cordial relationship, and my husband's income is more than adequate, so we live quite comfortably. As it would appear, I need only look at you to know these things. Oh gosh! Your dress is the latest style, your hat clearly regularly groomed, and your eyes are animated. In short, you have no inkling as to why your husband might have disappeared, correct? That's right. He's a kind man with a strong sense of loyalty, and he rather dotes on me. Which would point to the possibility that he has become embroiled in some incident or other. Oh, that is exactly what I fear must have happened, Mr. Sholmes. I'm quite beside myself. My husband's employment is somewhat unusual, you see. What if he's incurred some miscreant's ill will? What exactly is your husband's line of work? He's a warder at the prison. Oh, a guard. That is somewhat unusual. That also ties back into the whole, uh, the whole mystery with what was going on six years ago. Because they said that the, they said that in between the uh, the prison and the graveyard, there was a hospital, right? So that sort of it ties everything together. So, your husband is a prison warder. That's right, yes. Well, in actual fact, he's the chief warder. Oh, wow. He's the chief warden of the prison? Indeed, I see. He doesn't seem like the type. Well, chief prison warder certainly qualifies as something of a specialist occupation. Yes, it does indeed. My poor husband must prepare those dreadful punishments and see that they're carried out. Oh, so you're telling me that he was probably embroiled in that case. Well, maybe not actually, because that happened 16 years ago, didn't it? And he's been, you've been married for 15 years, so that's a one year difference. Maybe he was, maybe he was the warder before they got married, but still, definitely something interesting. Already finding parallels, and we ha don't even know anything about what's going on at the moment. Dreadful punishments, does she mean capital punishments? And at such times, he must occasionally spend a night or two in the prison dormitory. But for that extra responsibility, he is remunerated more handsomely than, than the other warders. Oh, that's great. Lovely. Of course, we make no mention of my husband's work to the neighbors. Yes, I believe your prudence is justified. Tell me, at what prison is your husband engaged? Barclay Prison, Mr. Sholmes. Really? Barclay? Oh, a fine establishment. If I'm not mistaken, there is a large cemetery just behind it. Yep, it's the same one. Yes, that's correct. Lowgate Cemetery. No! Lowgate Cemetery? The very place we were discussing in court. That's unbelievable. Just adds more credence to my theory that the biggest lie in this entire series is that the jurors are randomly selected. Unbelievable, my dear fellow, and yet undeniable. Sorry, Mr. Sholmes, I'm afraid you've lost me. Ah, pay no heed, madam, pay no heed. A private matter. This can't really be a coincidence, can it? Hmm. So, to the matter of your husband's disappearance, when did you realize he was missing? Please try not to laugh. It was yesterday. I'm sorry, yesterday? That really is recent. Laughably so. 
The truth is, my husband does at times have occasion to spend the night away for his work. It's not at all out of the ordinary for him to not return at home at night, but this is different! For him not to make any contact for a whole day, that has certainly never happened before! Oh my dear Daly, whatever can have happened? My dear Mrs. Vigil, please, calm yourself. Now then, have you contacted the police? Why, naturally, but sadly. They refused to listen to my pleas as my husband has only been missing for one day. I was asked to wait patiently at home. In truth, Mrs. Vigil, I concur with the police. However, let us not be hasty. I see no reason why we should not engage my deductive powers to track your husband down anyway. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sholmes. And furthermore, let me assure you, a chance to solve the greatest problem known to man for another month has no bearing on my decision. I seek only to put a sweet smile on another Londoner's face. That's really all there is to it. You have my eternal gratitude. I shall pay any sum you care to mention. You seek only to put this sweet rent in your landlady's purse. That's all there is to it. Very true, very true. Thank you for everything you have shared with us, Mrs. Vigil. I believe I have all the information I need to begin my investigation. Oh, please report to me soon with good news, sir. Fear not, madam. In a day or two, I shall be contacting you with a heartening report, I'm quite sure. So soon? Oh, how splendid, Mr. Sholmes. Good news should be delivered early, as I always say. You, if you would be so kind as to leave the photograph of your husband in my possession. Okay. Thank you. Now, allow me to show you the door. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Sholmes. You've been simply marvelous. You know, I think it every time, Hurley. But how do you come out with such nonsense? Good news in a day or two? Are you sure? I can't be sure, of course, but then I didn't swear on it. I merely gave the good woman some hope. I hope to be able to give her good news, one might say. After all, the, re the rent must be paid by the end of the day tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta do it then. If by that time I've successfully located Mr. Vigil, we shall be mutually relieved. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Naruhodo? Don't look at me with those pleading eyes. Well, my dear fellow, did you hear the details of the case? Yes, my hearing is surprisingly good, actually. Excellent! And what did you make of it? Well, I was surprised to learn where her husband worked. At Berkeley Prison, I mean. Ah, so you noted that. Of course, especially with the mention of Lowgate Cemetery. Lowgate Cemetery is at the rear of Barclay Prison, so it was renowned among us students at the university for being haunted by the ghosts of condemned convicts. Barclay Prison is where that notorious man was incarcerated. The professor. And now a warder from the prison has mysteriously disappeared, it would seem. It's all very peculiar. Indeed. But nothing you can't handle, I'm quite certain, Mr. Naruhodo. Sorry? Run along to the prison and see what you can glean. Would you? It's the prison governor you want. No doubt the man is equally worried. But aren't you going to go yourself? Surely you needn't ask. I can't possibly be seen out with this hair! That's your excuse? Ronald McDonald looking ass. But you didn't go to Lime Street- but didn't you go to Lime Street with that hair? That was quite- that was quite a different matter. So I leave it in your capable hands. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm rather busy. Bye. Didn't you ask Iris to make tea? You're just gonna leave? Alright. Of course you are. Uh, Iris, are you still over there? Nope. She's 
seemingly disappeared too, because I can't talk to her. All right, well, I guess we're going to the uh, the prison governor's office. And while we do this, I'm gonna grab my charger for my controller really quick. There we go. Oops. A little bit unprofessional, but you know what? My video. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I've given up already. Been recording for 15 minutes and it's already scuffed. Let's go. Barclay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now it's going to do this. There we go. Now it's charging. Barclay Prison is on the outskirts of London. Jesus Christ. What is it doing? I'm very confused. Hello? Oh, that's what it's doing. I understand now. I understand what's going on here. Even more scuffed than it was before. That's fantastic. Okay. Uh, so I tried plugging it into my computer without thinking that that was a bad idea. So, you know what? We'll just have to make do for now, I guess. Barclay Prison is on the outskirts of London, backing it onto a lonely burial ground. Its four high outer walls loomed quietly before us in the fog. Really, it's foggy too, just to make it even more creepy. Having requested a meeting, we were shown to the governor's office in the watchtower. Really? <laughs> the guillotine clock. That's, okay. Yeah, this definitely looks more like a, like a prison warden's office. He's got a battle axe and a gun. A deer head. Chains. That is a big bird. I don't know what it is. Oh. I feel like he's Scottish, but I can't do a Scottish accent. This place is... No. That, see? See? It's, it, first couple words come out of my mouth, and I'm just like, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> All right, uh, this place is full of hardened criminals. I cannot remember the last time a civilian was done here. And you don't know what a... I, I don't even know how the hell to pronounce that. I, I've never understood how to pronounce that. And you didn't want to talk to an inmate but to me? I don't even, I can't even read this stuff, dude. Do you ken who I am? I'm the governor, Barry Kaiden. Hmm? Oh, yes, it's a pleasure. I'm Ryunosuke Naruhodo, defense lawyer. And an Easterner, I see. Does that mean? Yes, I'm a visiting student of law from the Empire of Japan. Japan? Did you sing Japan? Um, yes? Well, there's no any of your kind in here, laddie. Maybe you should try the prison next door, eh? I didn't notice another prison next door, sir. Anyway, we came to ask you some questions, but I didn't like to be so direct, but... I have no intention of speaking with the likes of you suspicious-looking Easterners. Now get out of my air. Oh, racism, that's fun. So as soon as he finds out that we're from Japan, he reacts like this. That surely means... I think it's because of the Professor case. You think so too? Ten years ago. Oh, it was ten years ago. Why did I think it was sixteen years ago? Oh, they that's right. They came over here sixteen years ago. The father and the judge and... Um, the other father, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, they came over here 16 years ago, and then six years... Okay, yeah. For some reason, that slipped my mind. And then after his execution, he apparently re-emerged from his grave at the cemetery behind the prison. Oof. I... I might have known! You're sniffing around about, about that case, aren't you? Your agents, eh? Part of the professor's great web, no doubt. No, no, not at all. We're just... Get gone with ya, before I punch your lights out! We're going, we're going! Clearly the ghost of that killer still haunts this place. 
We're not going to get anywhere here. Unless we can somehow prove to this man that there's nothing suspicious about us. Governor... Governor Kaiden. What are you, what are you thinking, Miss Susato? I feel sure that name came up in conversation recently somewhere. I was wondering if whoever mentioned him might have some ideas to help us. Come to think of it, I have the same feeling. Hmm. Well, we can't do anything here yet. Uh, I don't remember whether it was here or here. I'm gonna try here first. Well, he's here at least. Uh, maybe this? Um, could I show you this, Lord Strongheart? Nope. I'm the Lord Chief Justice. I'm not here to offer advice about evidence. Especially when the evidence in question is so dull. Ah, so that's the real reason. Yep. Alright, so nothing here... Oh, you're sitting here. Mr. Mikotoba. That's Professor Mikotoba over here. Over over there. Ah, hello you two. I was just taking a moment to catch up on the world now that I'm unpacked. But where's Judge Jigoku? Yes, he's not the relaxing sort. He's taken himself off to pay his respects to all the legal bigwigs. Having only just arrived in the country today? Goodness, he is full of energy. Um, Professor, you mentioned something before about how you'd known the prisoner govern the prison governor at Barclay Prison. Oh, Governor Kaiden, you mean? So it is the same man. It's probably Seedon or something like that. Father, we must speak with the governor. But he refused to talk to us. He said we were suspicious Easterners. Easterners. Well, I'm sure if I accompanied you, it would be a very different story. Oh, would you? That would be wonderful, if you have time now. Sadly, as you can see, I'm very busy at the moment. Busy drinking coffee on a comfortable settee? Now, now, I have a rather lot to prepare for tomorrow, you know. Oh, s sorry, I didn't say that out loud, did I? Nope, they're both psychic. Yumiko Tobas are alarmingly good at reading people's thoughts. Or could it be that you Naruhodos are alarmingly bad at hiding your thoughts? Let's not fall out now. I have an idea. Writing a memo? What's he writing on that piece of paper? Here's a letter of introduction for you. Hopefully when he sees my name, he'll change his tune. Ah, thank you. Why is the edge of it ripped? Good luck, then. I want to check that. Why is the edge of it ripped like that? Oh. What's on the back here? Oh, it looks like this is some sort of steamship ticket. The SS Grouse, First Class Cabin, 001. Yokohama Departure, 11th of September. London Arrival, 1st of November. Ah, that's the boat that Professor Mikotoba and Judge Jigoku came on from Japan, isn't it? Yes, I think it called at Dunkirk on the north coast of France for a night before finally arriving in Dover. To think it's been almost a year since we arrived in Dover on the SS Buria. It seems a shame not to keep your ticket as a memento of your trip, don't you think? Yes, I agree. I have mine safely in my diary. And I keep mine in my wallet, so I have it with me at all times. Oh, well how strange. Where could it have gone? Are you like this on purpose, Mr. Naruhodo? Did I imagine it, or was that comment accompanied by a little sigh? Hmm. So that means nothing to us right now. It might mean something later, though. And then what does it say on the front? Professor Mikotoba has wonderful handwriting, doesn't he? This dark-suited young man is not in the least bit untrustworthy. Is it just me, or does that make me sound extremely untrustworthy? <laughs> I do wish he'd at least call you called you a nice young man. I'm really not sure that would help. Well, 
At least we got the letter, letter of introduction. Let's go talk to the man with my terrible attempt. I said get out! Oh. You have to present it first. Okay. If you just cast your eyes over this, Governor Kaiden. What's this then? You can I pull the wool over my eyes, you good for nothing, yap Japanese student? Mikotoba? That. that young jock from the forensics laboratory? That Mikotoba? Yes, exactly. Him. Oh dear, perhaps I should have said something sooner. I'm Eugene Mikotoba's daughter, Susato. Jeans! You're the young man's daughter? And you didn't I think to mention that afore? I... I do apologize. Aye, well, you'd best take a seat then. Can I offer you a cup of tea, perhaps? That's more Irish than Scottish. And did I forget to try one of these wee handcuffed biscuits? They have handcuffed biscuits? What? Your father's influence is nothing short of amazing. I'm bitterly regretting not announcing who I was from the outset now. So then, what can I do for you, Han? Well, we're currently investigating a case. It's one of your warders, you see. He's gone missing. Missing? That's right. It's surely been reported to you as well, being the prison governor. I have nay heard nothing of the sort. There's no missing persons in my prison. Oh! But how can that be? It's Mr. Daily Vigil, your chief warder. Eh? Vigil? That's right. His wife came to us and asked to asked us to investigate his disappearance. Let's skip the part about him only going missing yesterday for now. Uh-oh. Clearly that means something to him. Would you be so kind as to tell us what you know, sir? I, I of course. We understand that Mr. Vigil is the chief warder here at the prison. Aye, that he was. He was. Strong sense of responsibility and dedicated to the job, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. He was a fine warder. Was. Sorry, did you say was? Aye, he does not work here no more. He left the job. Oh my! When was this exactly? There's a question. When was it a boot? Can I have been much less than... Ten years ago now. Damn! He's been lying to her for ten years? What? T ten years ago? He stopped working here ten years ago? Aye, as, my, as I mind it. You can... I have not heard the fella's name in all that time. That's a worry if he's gone missing, though. But, but Mrs. Vigil made no mention of it. I think perhaps, Mr. Naruhodo, that his wife simply doesn't know. I think she's unaware that he no longer works here. Governor, S Governor Kaiden, can you tell us what happened? Why did Mr. Vigil give up his job here? That's important, is it? Yes, I believe it may be. What are you thinking, Mr. Naruhodo? I can't help wondering, given that it was ten years ago. Ah! Which was exactly when the professor was being held at this prison. So, Mr. Vigil actually resigned from the position of Chief Warder ten years ago, you're telling us? What happened to make him leave the job? In actual fact, he did not leave the job willingly. He had no choice in the matter. You mean, he was dismissed? It was after a particular walk. Sorry, a walk? I had swore word for it in here. A walk to the gallows. And an execution. 
It's the job of the Chief Warder to prepare the gallows tree and oversee any executions, you see. Only, Vigil did something unthinkable on that last walk he was manning. What did he do? I'm sorry, but... I, can I reveal that information? Yeah, that's state secret. Because that was the professor execution. But I can tell you it's very rare for a Chief Warder to be relieved of his post. But why wouldn't Mrs. Vigil know about it? She appears to be under the impression that her husband still works here. I wouldn't ken anything about that, I'm afraid. Can you perhaps answer one more question about the circumstances of his dismissal? And what would that be in? That last execution that Mr. Vigil was responsible for overseeing. Was it by any chance the professor's? My thoughts exactly. I'm sorry, I really am. But I'm at no liberty to answer that. I see. Yeah, pretty sure it was. So what about you and Mikotoba? My father came to Britain all those years ago in order to study forensic medicine. But you seem to have been well acquainted. The dead room, the prison, and the cemetery have a lot to do with one another. After all, they need fresh corpses for forensic research. You can? Yes, I can imagine. The advancement of medical science isn't always particularly palatable. Your father worked in the laboratory just on the far side of the graveyard. In the basement of St. Sinners. It's still in use today. St. Sinners. That's come up before, I'm sure. Yes, that's right. We've been there. Mikotoba and I aft used to ride in a carriage together and negotiate terms. I'm sh I was trying to remember when we had been to St. Sinners. I know I know we've been to a hospital before, but I didn't think it was St. Sinners. For more fresh material, I suppose. Aye, and we used to sit in here for hours and gab, about, gab on about a dissection and all sorts. Ugh, oh, it takes me back. Over a pot of tea and a plate of cuffed biscuits, of course. How charming. He was a good fella, your father. Reliable and dead set on his work. I'm afraid... I'll never understand you Japanese. Because of Genshin Asogi, I suppose. Well? I can I tell you anything else? Thank you so much for your time, Governor. Oh, one moment before you're away in. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Oh, he's got an axe at his waist. Ah, found it. Here, take this as a wee souvenir of your visit to the prison. What is it? That's Vigil's dismissal notice. It's ten years old now, of course. Oh my, are you sure? Aye, it's no trouble at all. It's not the original mind. Thank you very much, Governor Kaiden. Well, in return. Do me a favor and never come back here. That case is closed. Okay then. Well, I think we ought to return to Baker Street for the time being. Yes, I agree. We need to report back to Mr. Sholmes with what we found out about Mr. Vigil. What will he tell Mrs. Vigil, I wonder? I kind of want to look at a couple things first before we leave, though. I want to look at the bird and the clock. <laughs> ah, look, we have an opportunity here now, while the governor is away. Mr. Naruhoto, you could be imprisoned if you were caught. That's a good point. Perhaps not, then. Oh. That's disappointing. So I can't look at the area. At least not now. That tells me that I will be later for some reason. Okay. To the suite.
we're back. Hello, you two. No. Wrong one. Hello, you two. I thought you'd be back for before long, so I baked some scones for us all. Ah, so that's what the delicious smell is. Oh my god. Now he looks like... What kind of character has that shade of blue in their hair? I actually can't remember of one. That's such a bright blue. <laughs> Greetings, my dear fellows. You've returned a good deal sooner than I was anticipating. Um, hello, Mr. Sholmes. Hello, Mr. Sholmes? Say nothing. Your thoughts are written all over your faces in any case. It turns out that may have been advisable... It turns out that it may have been advisable to test my hair color restoration tonic before application. Oh my. Pray, tell me, what of our warder friend? Have you garnered some new information? Oh, um, yes, something very surprising in fact, though it's not a patch of on your hair to be honest. It most certainly isn't, but still, we discovered that... Sholmes! Nope. It's the wrong person again. Drop everything, Sholmes! This is more important! Gina? Uh-oh. I... I can't add him and leave it! Oh. What's happened? Clearly a very grave matter indeed. For Miss Lestrade made no mention of my hair whatsoever. Oh, sh come on! <laughs> it's... it's the boss. What do you mean? Inspector Gregson? What?! What the fuck?! The boss is... he's... he's dead! What?! They... they just found his body, shot with a pistol! What?! But... but... Inspector Gregson! He was murdered? No, not Gregsy. Come in, my dear girl. Tell us the whole story. What the f fuck? What? I gotta fucking take a second. What the fuck? Are you serious, Gina? Inspector Gregson was... He was really shot? I don't know much about what's happened myself yet. They're still there, investigating the scene. Where did this take place? A little rented room in a building full of flats in on Fresno Street. The outskirts of town, nowhere near his home. He was perhaps investigating a case then. The thing is, no one at the yard knows nothing about no case around there. Oh, how strange. The boss was... He was so good to me. I know I ain't much up, up to much yet, but... One day I was gonna show him. I was gonna show him I'd become a pro proper detective. Oh, Jenny. Oh, wrong thing. Damn it. I gotta skip through it again. Looks like you can just hold the button. I didn't know about that. So, who did this? Do you have any idea who the culprit is? They got him already. Already? They've caught the shooter so soon? A witness reported something was going on, and the boys got straight down there and took care of him. Who? What awful person did this? Is probably the guy we're looking for. I... I still can't believe it myself. Gina? It was... the Reaper. Oh, sh shit!
The... Wait a minute! You don't mean... They've arrested Lord Van Zeeks for it? That's right! That Reaper bloke's gone! And shot the boss! No! Lord Van Zeeks? Are you quite sure, Miss Lestrade? It's Barrack Van Zeeks the police have arrested. I saw him with my own eyes, on, in the interview room at the yard. I don't believe it. But there were witnesses, and they're all saying it was him. So you mean, there were actually multiple witnesses? They heard the gunshot, apparently. And when our lot got to the scene, there was only the boss, and that reaper bloke in the room. But there's no way Lord Van Zeeks would have taken Gregson's life. I... I just don't believe it. I don't believe it either. Thank you for informing us, Miss Lestrade. This really is most terrible news. I'm dreadfully sorry. What are you saying sorry for? You didn't know nothing! Well, anyway, I'm taking a cab over to the scene right now. Please come and all, as soon as you can. You've got to help. It's a detective's lot to appear wherever some sinister plot has unfolded. Little wonder we all look haggard. Sometimes these things are almost too much for the nerves. Mr. Sholmes. What use is there in being a great detective if I fail to see something like this coming, hmm? How can I let this happen to Gregson? To Gregson! Mr. Naruhoto, I shall leave at once to begin my investigations. Of course, yes. We will too. It would be helpful if you could talk to Mr. Reaper and see what you can glean. I'm sure you were intending to do so anyway. Until later, then. Inspector Gregson, dead, and Lord Van Zeeks arrested? Bruno, Susie! I've called you a hansom. It's waiting outside. Thanks, Iris. Shall we, Miss Susato? Yes. I would put I would put that down near the bottom of the list of things I expected to fucking happen. Jesus Christ. Why did I go here? I don't know why I went here. I, I meant to go to the, the prison. This really is an out of the way part of London. I doubt many people find their way down this back street. So this dust ridden written dust ridden rent rented old room is where it happened then. So this is where poor Inspector Gregson lost his life. Yes, and the police are already hard at work investigating, it seems. I don't see Mr. Sholmes anywhere, though. Perhaps his investigations have taken him elsewhere. Oi! What do you think you're doing there? Every one of them drawers has got to be taken right out so you can look underneath and all. I want the space above the ceiling checked, and don't forget to look inside the chimney stack, too! Blimey, ain't you lot ever gone over a, an house looking for dough when the owners are out of town? Gina's obviously got some unique investigative techniques she wants everyone to adopt. Oh, so you've turned up at last. Mind you, I ain't been here long myself. Hello again, Gina. Sholmes has only just left. You're lucky you missed that. You went prancing around in here, pointing at stuff and flicking that at his- Oh my god. Oh my god, there's so many, so many apostrophes in this sentence. He went prancing around in here, pointing at stuff and flicking that out of his, and then just scarpered. Oh, he's finished investigating already, you mean? Yeah, he didn't stop to say nothing to no one, not even me. Gina, would you mind if we investigated, too? Listen, Otto. You're a lawyer, right? Um, yes. Why? 
Well, you're not thinking of trying to help that Reaper, Reaper bloke, are you? Oh, poor Gina. She's never going to forget, is she? That trial will haunt her forever. Gina, if you don't mind me saying, if Lord Van Zeeks really is responsible for this crime, he will be duly and fairly judged in court. I suppose you're right, yeah? Go on then, Otto. Get investigating. I want to know the truth about what really happened here. Thank you, Gina. Alright, but first... <laughs> I'm glad we did that, but I was going to go to the prison first, so I'm just going to do that. Before we go over there. Guess who, buddy? Hey, buddy old pal. How you doing? This is fun, isn't it? Right? So perfectly fun. There he is, Lord Van Zeke's behind bars. So it's true, he really was arrested. He's sitting with his back to the wall, reading something. I don't think he's noticed us. Um, Lord Van Zeke's. Fancy meeting you here. The last place on Earth I'd like to be, with the last person on Earth I'd like to see. I couldn't very well not come. We heard what happened, that you and Inspector Gregson was. Go home. This has nothing to do with you. But... Forgive me, Lord Van Zeeks, but I must disagree. Inspector Gregson was very helpful to us on a number of occasions. We're indebted to him. At the very least, we owe it to him to find out the truth about his death. You must help us with our investigations, please! There's really nothing I can tell you. What were you just reading at the back of the cell there? Was it something related to the case? This? The Yard isn't quite so cavalier with its information as to share case details with a suspect. This is a letter from an old acquaintance. Oh, who might that be? Someone you know, as it happens. Albert Harebrain. Of course, yes, I keep forgetting they went to the same university. And I would like to read my correspondence in peace, so let's get this over with, shall we? What is it you want to know? Strange. I mean, let's face it, Lord Van Zeeks never misses his words. But they seem to have less bite than usual somehow. Probably because he watched a man get shot right in front of his eyes. Can you at least tell us your side of the story, Lord Van Zeeks? What happened? How much do you already know? We know that the inspector was shot dead in a small rented room on Fresno Street, and that you were found there by the police when they arrived on the scene and immediately arrested. We were told that there was nobody else in the room and that some witnesses heard the gunshot. Then you're well informed, and there's really nothing I can add. The truth is, I don't know what happened myself. But the gun sh but the gunshot, obviously you didn't fire the gun, did you? I'm not in the habit of shooting the people I work alongside. I also heard the noise, however... Before I had a chance to investigate, I was apprehended by the arriving officers. So if he doesn't actually know what happened. So he didn't witness the- he didn't witness the shooting. He just heard the gunshot, went into the room, found Gregson. And then the police showed up and saw him on the scene and arrested him. So he doesn't actually know what happened. If I might ask, what were you doing in that place to begin with? I don't need to answer that. Oh! After all, you're not representing me. He is going to need a lawyer, though. Hmm... Who's going to be representing you in court, Lord Van Zeeks? Anyone other than you, I should imagine. Uh. Would I be right in assuming 
that you have no representation as yet? Defense lawyers shy away from any trial involving the Reaper, as I'm sure you know. But this is different. In my career, of all the defendants I've prosecuted, only 19 have ever been acquitted. Of them, 16 subsequently died in mysterious circumstances. Questions will be asked now. Surely not. I assure you, no defense lawyer will want to touch me with the end of a, lar of a barge pole. But you didn't actually have anything to do with those people's deaths, did you? It's been ten years now that I've been known as the Reaper of the Bailey. Believe me, nobody wants to know the true ident identity of this killer more than I. However... It seems things may come to a head before I have the chance to uncover the truth about that. What does he mean by that? After the trial, Professor Harebrain was supposed to go straight back to Germany, I thought. It's a letter to inform me of his safe arrival at home. I arranged his passage by sea and rail. It's a relief, I must say. He should now go be he should now be beyond the reaches of the Reaper. Because the Reaper doesn't follow people abroad, you mean? Yes, so it seems. Your stooped little Nipponese friend, for example. You told me he was keeping well in Japan when I inquired the other day. Yes, that's right. He's an author now, happily working in Tokyo. So Professor Hairbrain is safely back in Germany now. He is. So, it appears our conversation has run dry. There was a two second silence, that's all. <laughs> well, in any event, if you'll excuse me now, I wouldn't like to detain you. I was wondering, Lord Van Zeeks, if you'd like. I'd be happy to advocate for you. You trust me, do you? Yes. I've heard you. I've heard you speak many times in court. I've seen how you treat people, so I'm quite sure that you would never have taken another's life. It's just my feelings can't be used as evidence in a court of law, sadly. It's a very gracious offer, however. I trust no one. What? Not the police, not the judiciary, and not you Nipponese. But, please. I have no intention of engaging your services. The chasm between us is just too wide and too deep, it seems. I'd appreciate it if you don't visit again then neither of us will waste any more time. Perhaps we need to dig a little deeper and find out more about Lord Van Zeeks and what happened to Inspector Gregson. And I think we're going to do that in the next episode. Because I need... I need a minute. I need a minute in between episodes to just you know, sort my thoughts and calm down because what the fuck is happening anymore? <sighs> Alright. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> I'm gonna end it on a somber note and we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna wait until next episode to actually start digging into this and come to grips with what's occurring right now. Thanks. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.